Hello and welcome. We are going to look at question 6 of UCE 2020 Chemistry Paper 2. And this is all about mole concept. 3.4 grams of a compound Z consists of 1.0 grams calcium, 0.8 grams sulfur, and the rest being oxygen. They want us to determine the empirical formula of our compound Z. Remember, empirical formula is the simplest formula that shows the simplest ratio of the elements that are present in this given compound and in this case the elements that we have are calcium sulfur and oxygen so they have given us the mass of calcium in that compound they have given us the mass of sulfur in that compound and they have given us them they have not given us the mass of oxygen but at least we know that we have our calcium we have sulfur present we also have oxygen those are the elements present and we have the total mass of the compound so for us to determine the empirical formula we need to first find the mass of oxygen since they said the rest being oxygen and we have the total mass which is 3.4 we can find the mass of oxygen so the mass of our oxygen will obviously be the total minus the sum of the two so this will be our 3.4 is the total minus the sum of calcium and sulfur which is our 1.0 plus 0 0.8 which is 3.4 minus 1.8 and we shall get 1.6 grams so this is the mass of oxygen so we shall Try to note down the element composition so that we can at least have some organized work. So element composition, we have calcium, we have sulfur, and we have oxygen. So the first thing we do, we are going to first find the number of moles. We know that number of moles is equal to the mass of a given substance divided by either the relative atomic mass, if you are looking at the mass of a given atom or at least the RFM if you are looking at the whole molecule so in this case we are going to first find the number of moles so number of moles of calcium we shall get the 1.0 first we shall also have our sulfur which is 0 0.8 our oxygen which is now 1.6 so to get the number of moles, we shall divide through by the mass, the relative atomic mass of calcium, which is 40. Then we shall have 0 0.8 divided by the relative atomic mass of sulfur, which is 32, while also oxygen, which is 16. So our number of moles, or we can simply, okay, let us write the number of moles here. 1.0 divided by 40, we shall have... 0 0.025 0 0.8 divided by 32 0 0.025 1.6 divided by 16 we shall have 0 0.1 so these are the number of moles for each of these elements but now we need to find the mole ratio because these moles interact to create kind of like a ratio between the corresponding elements so our simplest ratio let us first find the ratio first, the mole ratio. So for mole ratio, we normally divide by the smallest, and in this case, the smallest number of moles are 0 0.025. So we shall have 0 0.025 divided by the smallest, 0 0.025. 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.025. So please let me know in the comment section if at all you would like to know why we actually divide through by the smallest. Otherwise it may seem like crumb work. So our simplest ratio, our simplest ratio will be, remember I said the empirical formula talks about the simplest ratio. So this divide by that, it's a 1, a 1, 0 0.1 divided by that, it's a 4. That means one carbon atom can bond with one sulfur atom and these two can also bond with four oxygen atoms so our 
empirical formula that is required becomes that calcium sulfate those are the two marks deduce the molecular formula of z now molecular formula is the actual formula of the compound given the formula mass of z being that so we know that if you have your empirical formula multiplied by a certain factor we shall get our molecular formula so in this case even in terms of mass it will be true so that means we shall get our calcium sulfate multiplied by a factor we just prefer n but it can be x it will give us the molecular formula mass which will be 136 so that means our calcium which is 40 plus our sulfur which is 32 plus our oxygen which is 16 times 4 which will be called 64 which will be 64 n will give us 136 we want to find the value of n such that we can put it in this expression to get the actual molecular formula so we shall get 136 n is equal to 136 so you realize that our n is 1 so if we put back our n here we shall discover that actually the empirical formula is the same as the molecular formula so at this point we can say that the molecular formula molecular formula of z okay of z has writing zinc is our calcium sulfate as you can see one mark name one reagent okay we are going to look at that on our next slide reduce sorry name one reagent that can be used to identify the anion in the aqueous solution of z remember we are having calcium sulfate as our compound so you have calcium sulfate so you'll discover that our anion is actually this sulfate ion so we want to find the region that can be used to identify this anion usually here we shall get a reagent that will give at least a precipitation with this anion and at least we can use acidified barium nitrate acidified barium nitrate solution so we know that barium together with sulfate will form a white precipitate of barium sulfate that's why we get a solution of barium nitrate which is actually soluble in water then we acidify it we add some acid to ensure that the precipitate we are forming does not involve carbonates because barium can also form a white precipitate with a carbonate but now we acidify it we add some acid to it such that if at all the white precipitate we see is because of the presence of the carbonate it will at least break it down to form carbon dioxide and water so this is the reagent we shall use write the ionic equation for the reaction that takes place so we shall have the barium ions from our barium nitrate these ones will react with the sulfate ions from our calcium sulfate then we shall form our insoluble barium sulfate which is a solid so that will be the ionic equation so take note here you can also use lead to nitrate solution lead to nitrate solution although we might need to warm it afterwards because we know also lead to chloride can sometimes form a precipitate but at least the best option can be acidified barium nitrate solution write the ionic equation of that sometimes they will tell you to explain maybe to, to to tell them what is observed but in this case the best reagent acidified barium nitrate and this is the ionic equation thanks for watching stay safe don't forget to subscribe 
we shall have our next video out soon.